Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast is looking at hybrid orthodontic treatment and was by Olivia Lebel. Now, Olivia described the digital orthodontist looking at two different aspects, digital indirect bonding as well as in-house aligners. Now, the workflow that Olivia used for this is mainly through the software on its KEF, but there's different systems that can be used to achieve the same outcomes. Just to recap, the podcast is an opinion piece and is the independent work of myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. So starting off looking at digital indirect bonding, well the advantages of this process is that it allows a truly customised bracket positioning, not only in respect to the position of the bracket, but also the prescription can be altered in all three dimensions to to a degree. What the software allows us to also do is carry out a visual simulation of the tweaks and changes to bracket heights and positions as well as the prescription and see the effects that can occur. So how does it take place? It starts off with a digital study model, the AI segments it to define each individual tooth. But then what Olivia mentioned is that there is manual adjustments required to ensure the gingival components and occlusal components are correct. And this is a theme that I noticed in Olivia's lecture. There's still a lot of manual involvement involved with digital indirect bonding to get the setup correct. Next, the process then goes on to selecting brackets. So these are stock brackets which are used and there's a whole host of commercially available brackets. Following that, the philosophy of the bracket positioning can be selected, whether it's Andrew's FA point or bracket chart height, such as MBT or Alexandra's philosophy. Now, so far, these are stock processes, selecting the bracket, selecting the positioning philosophy. Now the customization comes in, as each individual bracket can be manipulated on the screen, as well as the prescription changed to an order of a degree. And then near enough in real time, a click can take place to visualize these changes on the teeth and further changes selected. What I hadn't come across before as well is that arch forms can also be selected, whether they're Euro arch forms or the Damon arch forms or whatever arch forms you wish to then choose. And you can simulate the effects of those taking place on the dentition. Next is the fabrication of the indirect bonding trays. How do we go from the virtual through to brackets in the patient's mouth? It starts off by designing the indirect bonding tray. That in itself involved quite a bit of trial and error in Olivia's words, in selecting the geometry of the tray, in changing the thickness and also the cutting guides. And Olivia was generous and shared his values for the bracket prescriptions that he normally uses, which is the experience self-ligating brackets by GC. Okay, once that has been designed in the Onyx KEF software, it gets exported through to a 3D printer. Now, even when it comes to the selection of a resin, there is ones that work better with certain bracket systems than others. So it's not a one size fits all. And again, trial and error takes place in this process. The indirect bonding tray is then printed in a conventional way. Uh, It is washed with isopropanol and then light cured as a normal resin printed component takes place. Now, it's interesting when the brackets are now positioned within the tray, he gave a key tip, which which was to use a releasing agent such as oven spray prior to positioning the brackets. That just makes that separation process easier. So I asked Olivia this because it was unclear to me as how does the bracket get customized? You're using a stock bracket here and a stock philosophy. And actually it's the distance the bracket is placed in the digital tray in its relationship to the tooth itself. Now, position the bracket further away in the three planes of space then alters the expression of the prescription, which is then what is controlled through this process. Clever stuff. When it comes to the clinical side, it's the normal stuff. We're going to isolate, etch, bond, and carry out the insertion of the indirect bonding tray. Now, the adhesive is key, so it has to be butted onto the mesh base itself, and you recommend using acetone to begin with to ensure there's no finger marks left on those brackets. The next side to the digital orthodontist is the use of in-house aligners. And he described this as the most straightforward way to finish and detail cases. He's experimented using virtual debonding of brackets from a scan and said that it didn't have great accuracy. He still prefers to debond brackets, then take a scan to design his finishing aligners. There's an aligner module in on its KEF, as there are on other software platforms as well. And it simply allows digital modification to each tooth position. Now, we usually require some settling in cases, and what I really liked is how we explored this. He described it as the Hawley effect. 
i.e. leaving a gap on the posterior teeth in the aligner to allow the posterior teeth to extrude into it to achieve posterior settling. And within the aligner 3D software design, there is ability to choose attachments. Now these attachments in Onyx CAF software were really quite varied. I was impressed with the options Olivia had to choose from. He also described new innovations and he described something termed the Sara Wing, which is developed by Aladdin Sabah. And this is essentially is a class two corrector, developed and embedded into the aligner itself. Now, I was really impressed by how rigid these look, and they were similar to the buckle wings in Invisalign's mandible advancement appliance, but they seemed to just engage far better from the imagery that he showed. Because it's in-house aligners, we can also choose the staging that's going to take place. The parameters per aligner can be modified to what we think is predictable for that particular case, but also we can modify that per stage if we choose to do so as well. Following that, for at least the conventional approach to creating an aligner, this working model is then printed. Now once that's printed, it undergoes its washing and curing, and then the thermal performing process takes place. And again, by bringing things in-house, we have a selection of the trim line to choose from. Now you've quoted a paper by Cowley in 2012, which essentially showed a straight trim line versus a scalloped trim line was more favorable. It resulted in less attachments being needed to deliver the same amount of force that was created and greater predictability in tooth movement as well. So it's something to take home. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Now, I was impressed by Olivia's dedication to digital technology within orthodontics. He's also going to be presenting at a symposium, which is entitled Ad Adaptly Aligners, Brackets or Both. And that's happening in September uh, on the 8th and the 9th. And that's with the Get Orthodontics Symposium. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's podcast. Please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.